parents, amazing calm parents. Um, how are you guys doing? We are full fledged into school. Ah, um, I was talking to my neighbor this morning who has two teenage boys and <laughs> I made a comment because she was walking in with bags full of Chick-fil-A. And I said, don't let my daughter see that because she loves Chick-fil-A too. And she goes, well, I'm trying to bribe them out of bed. Uh, I'm ha really struggling to get them out of bed and at least signing in relatively on time so they're not marked as absent every day and keeping them focused on school instead of playing video games when I'm working 14 hours a day. I don't see how it's this is going to happen. I don't know what I'm doing. And so we talked for a while and it was interesting because I had, I've been reading the book, um, I got it right here, Drive by Daniel H. Pink. It's an older book. When was it done? It was an older book, but it's all about motivation. And he doesn't really talk about kids. It's mostly in the corporate world that he talks about it, but it's so relevant to how to help motivate our teens. And I wanted to share a couple kind of ideas that have come to mind that I've pulled from this that I think could really apply to helping us help our teens become more motivated. The real, um, the real difference here and the, what he talks about is this motivation 2.0 which is the carrots and the sticks, that if you do this, then this will happen, the extrinsic form of motivation. The, I will give you this if you do this, or um, even, you know, do your chores and I'll pay you your allowance. Anything that's tied to external rewards, this is really the way businesses try to motivate employees and how we as parents have been taught and learned to motivate our kids, right? How many of us do this if then get A's on your report card and you get this, right? Or we do the opposite. Don't get A's or don't do this and I'm going to take your phone away. Same thing. Um, it is a, if you do this, something is going to happen to you and we try to motivate them this way. And here's the problem. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because what happens is we teach them to be motivated, not by doing what we want them to do. We teach them to be motivated to get the reward or avoid the punishment. And there's many, many ways that they can get the award, reward, or avoid the punishment, which is why cheating has gone up tremendously. Why? Because it's not about learning, it's about getting the A, no matter how you get it, because we're focused on the A and then they get the reward. They're not, they're not motivated by learning, we're focused on the end result. It's why lying has gone up. Because if they believe I did it, that's all that matters because then I get the reward or I avoid the punishment whether I did it or not. So this way of motivating any human being, especially teenagers, is this is why it's so ineffective and we keep having to ramp up the rewards. We keep having, they end up saying, well, I'm not going to do it unless I get a reward. Have you ever had um, a child go, well, what do I get in return? I've had that happen. Well, well, what do I get when I do it? What do you mean? What do you get? You, you get to learn, but we haven't taught them to be motivated to want to learn. We haven't taught them to be motivated by the process. And there's many reasons why they're not motivated by that naturally. Because first of all, standing in front of it, sitting in front of a computer all day while somebody talks at you, who, who, who wants to do that? I mean, one of the things my neighbor and I were talking about is like, as adults, how many times have you been on a conference call and all of a sudden you hear your name and you're like, oh, uh, crap. 
and then you go, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the last piece. Can you repeat that? And you're like, you lost the, you missed the entire thing because you weren't paying attention. You were texting somebody. You weren't paying attention at all. And yet we expect our teens who have far less motivation to listen because we're we're motivated to listen because it's our job and we get paid to do it not that much right and you know we want to do our job well and we want to be respected so we've got more motivation motivation to listen to those and yet we still can't so expecting our teens to be motivated to stay focused on something they're like like she was saying she goes her teen was asking why why will I ever need to know what happened in the 1500s? Great question. Why, why would you? If they don't know that, what's motivating them to, have, to not do something fun like playing video games or texting their friends or doing more TikTok dances? What's motivating them from not doing the fun stuff to do something that's extremely boring and they don't see any reason to do it? except that they're going to get in trouble if they don't. And the motivation we keep wanting to give them, well, you need to get A's. Well, why do they need to get A's? Well, to get into a good college. Well, why do they need to get into a college? You know, we've got these reasons, but they're not reasons that motivate them. And we don't even always have good answers to give them because we're not even sure why that's important sometimes, right? Why do they have to get into the best school? What, what does that matter? So what I want you guys to think about when you're struggling to motivate your teenager is what does actually motivate them? What does work? And how do we start making them feel more intrinsically, internally self-motivated rather than externally motivated, which is not going to last very long or have, it may, it may cause them to kick into gear right that second, but you're gonna have to keep doing it over and over again. So we want them to be motivated intrinsically. And um, Pink, again, from the book Drive, Daniel Pink, um, really identifies three core things that motivate us. And I love this because I've read this in a ton of stuff and I have found this personally too. The first one, and this is really big for teenagers, is autonomy. All of us seek autonomy. We want to be in control of our own lives. And if you've listened to anything I've ever talked about, I've always bring this up, is teens are innately driven. They are wired to seek autonomy. They have to. It's for their healthy development. If they don't, they're going to live in your basement for the rest of their lives. They need to seek autonomy and they need to seek autonomy from you. This is why when a parent says something and anybody else in the world says something, they can say the exact same thing a teen will not listen to the thing the parent said, and they will listen to it if it, anybody else in the world says it. This drives us nuts, but it is a very good reason. There is a very good reason for it because they need to establish autonomy from you, no one else, from their family. Understanding this, think about how are we trying to motivate them that currently is threatening their autonomy. Autonomy is making their own choices. It's being in charge of what they're doing, in control of what they're doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it. A resistance. We become very resistant as soon as we think this because we're like, well, if we let them be in charge of when they're doing what they're doing, they're not going to do it. You know what? They might not. The thing is, that is their choice and they're eventually going to learn why they need to do it because they're going to get the consequences. If we don't allow them to fail at this, if we don't allow them to ad address the new natural real life consequences, 
They're never going to learn to be self motivated, intrinsically motivated. So this may be a really difficult thing right now, but parents, if you're feeling like you have to stay on top of your teen 24 seven to get them to do their homework, I'm going to encourage you right now to do something extremely, extremely difficult. Stop. Now, I'm not saying we're not gonna give them tools to do it themselves, and I'm not saying they're not gonna fail right away. They might, but we need to stop riding on top of them because they need to learn how to do it themselves. If, if, you, if you are more motivated and it is more important to you for them to get an A or do well, well, good, because now it's gonna be all up to you for them to get an A. They need to be motivated to do it. And if you back off some and it stops being about being compliant, which is opposite of autonomy and what parents struggle so hard. Most of our power struggles are because parents are trying to get their kids to be compliant and do as they say, and teens are pushing back because they want to be autonomous. Boom power struggle every time parents think about why are we trying to get our kids to be so compliant it's not teaching them what they need to learn so let's think about how do we give more autonomy over our over to our teens and this may be saying so we know you have to get up at 9 a.m to sign on and we know this is a struggle to get up at 9 a.m so what are some things we can do what are some things you can do if they become part of the solution? If they're the ones that come up with how it how they're going to achieve this and it becomes important to them and they have control over how they do it rather than you telling them how to do it, they're more likely to do it without you having to nag. Who wants to nag? Nagging sucks. We hate nagging as much as they out hate nagging. So let's stop nagging because it doesn't work. It doesn't, it just doesn't, it's terrible. Ugh. So autonomy, very, very big. How do we help them have more autonomy, more control over what they do? Another big one is purpose. Why the heck do they have to sit here all day and listen to someone talking head, tell them boring stuff and do things that hurt their heads that they find not interesting and they have no reason and no understanding how it could possibly apply to their life. I, I'm not motivated to do that either. So let's sit down with them and think about, let's dream with them, dream big. What is something that you want in your life? Whether it's what they want to do with their life, the type of lifestyle they want, the anything about their life, what they want to achieve, who they want to help. Kids are very motivated by helping others. Believe it or not, they are. Maybe not you doing your chores, but that's again, back to autonomy. Um, but when it's their choice, a lot of times they feel really good about helping others. So let's look at the purpose. What is their bigger dreams? Now let's step back. How does doing well in school, whether it's geometry or trig or history or whatever it is, how can that help them with what their purpose is? Math sucks, boring, boo, bleh. Well, do you want to be financially secure when you grow up? Do you want to make money? You're going to need to know math to invest, to know 401ks. If you don't want to get ripped off by anybody with contracts, you need to know math. So let's look at what can you use math for right now, today? What it, let's tie it to something relevant that's important to them. How can they use math for their video games? How can it help them improve their video games? There's gotta be a way. I don't know, I don't play video games. But how does it apply? Um, look at these different things. I know one of the things I love, um, my daughter's taking ASL, which I am excited. I wanna sit in the corner and learn from her because I think it's so cool. But she talks about you know, what, how she could use ASL in the future. 
what that could look like. And that motivates her to learn it because she sees it's not just getting an A in ASL, it's learning American Sign Language so that she can then use it in her future. Now I'm motivated. Now it's not about this stupid A that means nothing on your report card in the long run. I don't know about you, I've never had anybody in my career ask me what I got in trig or calculus, never. You know what, I got an A, nobody cares. I worked my butt off for that A, nobody cares. Um, give them a purpose, why do they need to know this? Then the third one is mastery. Mastery is a tough one, and this goes back to, and we've talked a lot about this because again, I'm an enormous follower of Carol DeWick and her mindset, and this is the fixed versus growth mindset. And mastery is also what um, Pink talks about, really, in fact, he refers to DeWick too, but it, it, it's about either believing that you are what you are right now, so your intelligence is, you're born with your intelligence, it's set for life, whatever you do is evidence of whether or not you are smart or not smart. You either are or you're not. That's fixed. Growth mindset is we are always improving in our intelligence. We're always learning. Every day we are becoming better. There's one theory, the 1% better every day, which I love. How are you 1%? But you're always mastering something. You're never, it's never perfect. Perfection doesn't exist, but you're always mastering it. So what are some smaller goals that excite them um, in, in anything? Like in their science class, what is something that would be really cool that they could get better at? Or what is something just in terms of studying online? Like what is something very tangible that they can say, I want to learn how to master this? Um, I love Jim Quick. He has his book Limitless um, and he's all about studies, study skills and the power of the brain and the mind and memory. What are some really cool memory techniques or study techniques that you could learn to master and then use them and practice them by learning this stuff from history class? Like what are some cool things that you can learn to expand your brain? Why would you want to expand your brain? Well, now let's use what you're learning in class and studying for homework as a way to practice that. See where I'm going with this? When we, when we try to just say, you just got to get an A, and I'm going to bribe you to get an A, they're going to fight getting the A because they don't understand, and they're going to focus only on the A, which is not about getting excited about learning. It's not about autonomy. It's not about purpose, and it's not about mastery. So I really want you to think when your teens are pushing back about something, how do I give them more autonomy and more control over this? How can I help them tie this to a bigger purpose that matters to them? And how can I help them focus on things that they want to learn to master, that they can measure, that they can see? This is one reason they love gaming, because you get, you can keep raising a level. You keep going up one more level, one more level, one more score, one more point. I get pulled into that. I mean, it's, you're getting this constant reward and seeing improvement. How can you help them see daily improvement? Not waiting till the end, did they get an A? How can you see them make daily improvement every day on something that matters to them? One other thing I wanted to share with you that Pink had that I loved is the DIY report card, the do-it-yourself report card. And the way he describes this is you sit down with them and you work out with them. What do you want to learn? What do you want to improve? What are the things that are going to measure your success? Let's write those down and let's figure out how we can do that, how you can do that. And then we can go check on and say, how are you achieving the goals that you have? How's your personal report card? How are you doing? And then when you get the grades at the end of the semester, you can look at them and say, how do those relate to the grades you got? Is there comparisons? Um, how do they tie together? And is the A more important or is it the fact that you learned and mastered these skills that were really important to you? Important? This is changing our thinking too, I know. 
We are so ingrained in our society that it's all about the grade. Why? What is that grade showing? What is that grade proving? It's not proving that they learned anything and it's not proving that they were motivated to learn anything. Some food for thought. I also wanna um, tell you guys about an upcoming event that I'm very excited about. It's called Stuck Together and I have a link below. And it is going to be, it's an all day workshop for parents and teens and it's a virtual event. And I'm gonna say right off the top, I know some people are like, uh uh, I don't wanna spend any more time online. I hear you, I get it. Um, the beauty of this is you can take some workshops, some of the courses, sessions, you don't have to take all of them. They are not like tied together. Um, you can get unlimited access if you want to go back and watch them. The beauty of this is it is giving you the skills and giving your teens, there's breakout sessions just for your teens. It's giving you guys the skills to really take full advantage of this unprecedented time together where we're stuck under one roof. We're stuck together, right? And I want so much for all of you to come out of this pandemic with one enormously great benefit, and that is that you use this time for your family to really bond and become close together, closer, and that you used it to understand and learn more about your team and to teen and to strengthen your relationship with your teen and to help your teen through a lot of this anxiety and stress and you've helped them and taught them the skills they need to get through this. And this is what we're going to do through this. We're going to teach you how to help your teens and understand your teens and help yourself or doing some self-care. We have some, and we, as I say, it's me and seven other family and teen experts that are coming. I got a bunch of people to come with all a wide range of expertise. And we've got some award-winning counselors that are gonna be there for your teens. And they're gonna do breakout sessions with them and give them tools to boost their self-esteem, their motivation, and help them address this growing anxiety and feeling of isolation. And they're gonna give those some, them the tools. And then we're ending with probably my, my one of my sessions I'm most excited about is bringing everyone together and improving your communication. And there's some really fun activities we're going to do. We're going to pit the teens against the parents um, in some challenges. We're going to do some communication um, team building because you are a team um, type of exercises to really help your improvement and have fun. It's about having fun with your family and showing that you can do that. So I want to encourage you, this is on Saturday, September 26th though, not in like two weeks. And it is gonna be a really fun filled jam packed day. We're doing giveaways. We're gonna have some surprises um, and everything that we make from this um, all the proceeds, every cent, is going to the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, which is an extremely worthy and important cause, especially now. And that's why we really focused on this, because we thought it was one of the most relevant um, charities that we could focus on right now um, that would help and support our teens, too. So... There, it's it's no lose. It's a win, 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 win situation. Win for you, win for your teens, win for suicide prevention, win for everyone. So I encourage you to check that out. I have to run. Hopefully you found some information in here that was helpful um, to help you motivate your teen. I'll talk to you guys soon.